The World Without Visas, Around the World with Valeri Shannon. Traveling across Thailand, Laos and Vietnam became the next stage of the World Without Visas project, within which Valeri Shannon travels only around the countries visa-free for Russia. On this trip to Indochina, Svetlana Shanina and Oksana Starodetskaya became his fellow travelers. Indochina, rainy season. The travel begins in Bangkok, for the most banal reason. In this city, there is the largest airport of Indochina. It is cheaper to fly here from Moscow than to Laos or Vietnam. The Buddhism, the state religion of Thailand, the king is considered the head of all Thai Buddhists, and the most esteemed Buddhist relic, the Emerald Buddha, is stored in the territory of the royal palace in the monastery of Wat Phrakeo. The entrance is open for tourists. It is only necessary to observe a dress code. No shorts, t-shirts without sleeves and short skirts are allowed. Shoulders and knees should be covered. Now we will put the necessary clothes to visit the Buddha's temple. In the territory of Wat Phrakeo, it is possible to see a model of the well-known Cambodian Angkor Wat. Stupas, temples and sculptures are exposed. On an internal wall of the gallery, a fresco with images of episodes of the Indian epos Ramayana can be seen. The monastery was under construction on strict Thai canons and for the construction of the royal palace, architects freely combine elements of national and European architecture. The Emerald Buddha can't be photographed, but it isn't forbidden to photograph the lying Buddha in the neighboring monastery Wat Po. Tourists are also engaged in it. Thais come to the temple to improve their karma. One of the ways to do so, a money donation. But you cannot just put money in the bank to collect alms. In the beginning, large banknotes need to be exchanged and then to place one coin in each of the balls. For Buddhists, size matters. The bigger the statue of Buddha or stupa, the more respect it gets from them. There is also another way, for example, to surprise not with the size of statues, but their quantity. So there are in local temples hundreds of identical copies of Buddha. Rather small, but a lot of them. In the monastery of Wat Po, it is easy to get lost in the courtyards, stupas and temples. Everywhere the entrance is open, but it is only possible to go barefoot, having left footwear at the entrance. Having sailed through the Chao Praia river, the travelers have got to Wat Arun and immediately went to his main stupa. From above, you can see the roofs of the monastery and ships cruising the river. Chao Praia is a fine alternative to the streets of Bangkok, which are eternally loaded with busy transport. Down the river, river trams, tourist vessels, leisure boats and barges scurry about and on the coast, uncountable temples and monasteries extend. A boat trip is a great opportunity in just a couple of hours without much straining to get a general idea of the modern capital city of Thailand. It is time to go further, to one of the old capitals of the country, Lop Buri. Lop Buri is called the city of monkeys. Macaques occupy the ruins of Prang Sam Yot. They behave so confidently as if the ancient temple belongs to them. In the temple located directly opposite of Saran Prakaram, there are even more monkeys. Of course, because here people created excellent conditions for them. There is a lot of food and places to freshen up on a hot day. In the middle of the 17th century, Lop Buri was the capital of Thailand. Since then, in the city, many half-ruined buildings have remained. The farther they are from the center, the less monkeys can be seen. A railway linking Bangkok with the north of Thailand passes through Lopburi. The express train carriages have only second class, air condition and aircraft seats. It is cool in the car, outside the sun is shining, the sky is clear and this in the midst of the rainy season. However, it is visible that it rained very strongly here just recently. The water came close to the railway tracks. If its level rises by a couple of centimeters, the rails will be completely flooded. In the city of Fitsanulok, on the river Nan, is Wat Phrasiratana Mahathat, or simply Wat Yei. It houses a bronze Buddha statue, Buddha Chinarat. 
Thais considered this gilded statue as the third most significant relic of the country. In the temple where it is established, there are always a lot of pilgrims who pray, meditate, wander around and take photographs. Actually, to be photographed with your back turned to Buddha is a blasphemy. But monks were already tired to explain it and have resigned. They ask not to pose standing while being photographed, not to block, with your mortal body, the immortal face of the Enlightened One. How is the chiking? Super. <laughs> Super. First experience in this journey. At the beginning of the 13th century, the Thai prince Bang Klang Hao has used the weakening of the empire of Khmer's and has proclaimed himself the king. He became the founder of the first Thai royal dynasty and the Sukhothai, a cradle of the Siamese civilization. The ruins of temples and monasteries are scattered on such a big territory that it makes it impossible to walk around. It is possible to rent a tuk-tuk or a motorbike but the most suitable type of transport is the bicycle. The most majestic monastery of Sukhothai, Wat Mahathat, was part of the complex of the royal palace. The foundation of the temple with a statue of the sitting Buddha and the central stupa have remained. The top of the stupa is in the shape of a lotus bud. The foundation of the stupa is decorated with the image of sedately walking monks. From the first days of existence of the Thai kingdom, Buddhism became the state religion. But along with it, there are also ancient animistic beliefs that have remained. The kings were praying simultaneously to Buddha, spirits and gods. Religious syncretism and tolerance are characteristics of modern Thailand. Along with enormous temples, stupas and Buddhist statues, there are also pagan sanctuaries. They are extremely small, but popular with pilgrims. For example, a sanctuary devoted to the Hindu god Shiva, particularly to his phallus. In the World Without Visas project, there is a principle. Every night in a new place, it means it's time to hit the road again. We are hitchhiking to Sukhothai, to the mountains. We have reached the bus station by Tuk Tuk. We boarded the bus to get to Chiang Mai by the evening. Chiang Mai, the capital of northern Thailand, the city of monasteries and temples. For many, the only and most important task during the visit of a Buddhist sanctuary, offerings to Buddha. This is done strictly according to the accepted rules. For example, money cannot be put in a box. They are hung on a special monetary tree for everyone to see, reminding of a decorated Christmas tree. If there is no money, sweets and flowers can be offered. All offerings are put before Buddha statues or portraits of especially esteemed priors of the monastery. People come to temples to speak to monks, to ask for advice in spiritual and worldly affairs, or just to sit being silent in meditation. The huge stupa of the monastery Wat Chedi Luang has been constructed in 1441. Buddha is presented in all forms here, both lying and sitting. And one statue seems to have gotten here from China. It is a well-fed and cheerful Buddha. In the Wat Phra Singh Monastery, founded in 1345, there is a gilded statue of Buddha. Buddha Phra Singh, a Buddhist relic of Thailand, the second in importance. It is always crowded in this temple. Pilgrims with flowers and offerings come here. Ceremonies and debates are held here. They attract influential Buddhists from across the country. The most honored monks receive great honor. Their statues are cast in bronze and covered with tin gold plates. And recently, they also have learned to make wax copies that look like they are alive. They can't be distinguished from the original. The Wat Swan Dock is already outside city walls. Its name approximately translates as the Field of Flowers. The main temple strikes by its gigantic size. It is the biggest in Chiang Mai. The monastery Wat Chad Yod, or the temple with seven spires, is also outside the old city. Exactly here, in 1977, took place the world's forum of Buddhists. And now it's full of life. Pilgrims experiment with the singing gong and monks recite the learned Buddhist sutras chanting. 
There is a lot of pilgrims in Chiang Mai, but there are even more tourists here. Therefore, the production and sale of souvenirs nearly became the main occupations of locals. The jewelry store, similar to a covered market the size of a football field, is officially considered the largest in the world. In addition to silk and cotton fabrics, they have mastered the production of textile from lotus stems here. They pull long threads out of them and load them in weaving looms. Sun protection umbrellas are made in full accordance with traditional technology of wood, silk or wax paper. The colors are most different but surely bright and elegant. It is time to go further. Oksana Strodetskaya has preferred to remain in Thailand and Valeri and Svetlana Shannon have gone to Laos. On the way to the border, they have made a short stop in Chiang Rai to visit the Chom Tong mountain. On three levels, concentric circles of 108 stone phalluses have been placed. The sanctuary enjoys wide popularity amongst women. They say if a lonely girl prays here, she will soon find a groom, and a married woman will have a child. From Chiang Rai, Valeri and Svetlana go by bus to the town of Chiang Kong. Then on a tuk-tuk, they reach the crossing of the border and by boat are transported across the Mekong River, where lies the border of Thailand and Laos. We were on time, just for the departure of the bus to Luang Prabang. We have to travel all night long. Luang Prabang was the capital of the kingdom of the same name. After the victory of socialism and the overthrow of the monarchy, the royal palace built by the French was requisitioned. The National Museum was later opened in it. The complex of the royal palace includes several buildings, the temple and an artificial pond. In Luang Prabang, over 30 ancient monasteries have remained. It is possible to walk around them for a day or two, but the travelers have preferred to go to the Tadsi waterfall, first on a minibus and then on a motorboat down the Nam Hang River. The Tadsi waterfall is not a simple waterfall. It is one of many, a complex system of cascades and a channel. And all of that is overgrown with forest. It is even hard to imagine the complete view of this impressive natural formation. Wherever you look, there is water. It flows, falls, rushes and murmurs. When the head starts spinning from gazing at all the scenery, it is time to go swim. For drivers, the washing of animals is work and for tourists, entertainment. It is time to go back, we can only leave from here by boat. Every year, more and more tourists are coming to Luang Prabang. In 2000, there was not a single souvenir stall. Now the part of the central street adjoining the royal palace is closed for transport in the evenings and turns into a tourist market. Street kitchens are also designed only for tourists, selling traditional Laotian dishes, the fish caught in the river and fried on a grill, noodles and fried vegetables. There are also typical sandwiches for Europeans. It is not for nothing that colonialists have taught Laotians to bake French rolls. He uses his fingers and doesn't bother. He will take the money with the same fingers. There is no railway in Laos. It is only possible to travel around the country by car. There are very few highways and all of them are very hectic. As soon as a landslide occurs, the traffic stops. Trucks, buses and passenger cars form a long chain. Laotians have already got used to this annual misfortune and quietly treat the compelled delays. The road workers called an emergency bring heavy construction equipment. The work has started, but even five excavators are unable to clear the highway in an hour. Those who can't wait longer take a detour on a narrow steep trail. At last, the movement is restored. According to some strange logic, they let the heavy trucks pass first and only late at night the turn reaches buses and minibuses. The travelers have arrived to Fon Savan 12 hours later than planned and instantly went to a ceremony of morning offerings. Buddhist monks, both in Thailand and in Laos, walk around every morning in the vicinities where the locals have an opportunity to present them with food. 
To feed the monks is an important and charitable gesture. Monks come for offerings only once a day, early in the morning. With full bowls, they will return to the monastery, will serve morning service and will have breakfast. Part of the food will be left for lunch and the remains will be fed to animals and birds. In the second half of the day, according to strict monastic rules, eating is not permitted. And so they live day by day without worrying about what to eat. All thoughts are about spiritual self-improvement. Well, at least, so it should be. In the Valley of Jugs, in a full disorder, thousands of stone pots and vases, up to 3 meters in size in the diameter and weighing up to 6 tons, are scattered. They were approximately produced all at once, one and a half to two thousand years ago. But for what purpose, it is still unknown. Archaeologists are advancing different theories, something that they stored grain in stone vessels, others believe that they were used as funeral caskets. However, neither grains nor human bones were found in any of the jugs. The riddle of their mission remains. During the Vietnamese War, Americans have dropped on the Laotian province of Siang Huang more bombs than on all of Europe during World War II. In Siang Huang, the capital of the province of the same name, only one old brick stupa and columns of the ancient temple have miraculously preserved. The American pilots have provided local smiths with iron for a hundred years to come. In Phon Savan, Valeri and Svetlana have finished traveling across Laos and have gone to the following country, Vietnam. We had to travel in the rain. It accompanied the travelers all along the way to the Vietnamese border, and then through Vinh to Hanoi and further to Ha Long Bay. The trip on a tourist vessel, not the best, but the easiest and cheapest way to visit the Ha Long Bay. The tourists are transported in wooden boats constructed in traditional Vietnamese style. On the lower deck, cabins, on the upper one, a restaurant. It is possible to sunbathe on the roof in good weather. The big vessel can come into the most secluded corners of the bay. It is necessary to transfer on a smaller boat. Only on it, it is possible to squeeze into a hole in the rock. To get to the bay closed from all directions. There it is possible to bathe or to wave with oars. For locals, rowing is not entertainment, but a severe humdrum of life. They do not live on land, but on floating houses or directly on boats. They eat the fish who is grown up in cages and on pocket expenses they earn by serving the tourists. The Tian Kong Cave, or Heavenly Haven, was opened fairly recently. Both the walls and the ceiling of the cave are lit up by hundreds of projectors hidden from the eyes. In the center of the cave, there is an employee who sits and excitedly reads the newspaper without paying any attention to the rumble of hundreds of voices echoing from the walls. The Huan Kiem Lake, the spiritual center of Hanoi. An ancient legend says that once a certain Le Loi was trying to fish here and saw a huge turtle passing by with a sword lying on its shell. So the fisherman instantly grabbed the heavenly gift and at once was tempted to go do some feats. With the use of the wonderful sword, Le Loi took victory over the Chinese aggressors who had attacked Vietnam again and he became the national hero. After the victory, Le Loi returned to the lake to thank the spirits for their help and accidentally dropped the sword in the water. As much as he tried, he couldn't find it. It was given and taken away. And the lake began to be called the Lake of the Returned Sword, or in Vietnamese, Huan Kiem. This legend has arisen in the 15th century. Since then, it was handed down. Nobody ever found the sword, and the turtle, as some believe, has been caught and locked inside a glass sarcophagus in the temple of the Jade Mountain. It is worshipped along with the Chinese gods and ancestral spirits. However, in the temple's yard, there are more people than inside of it. The checkers game seems to attract Vietnamese, not less than religious ceremonies. The temple of literature was founded in 1076 and devoted to Confucius. Vietnam's first university was open here. They enrolled students based on examinations results and were teaching, free of charge, children aged between 3 and 7 years old. The students studied Confucius' works and Chinese classical literature. 
If they successfully passed graduation exams, they would receive a degree of doctor in literature. The majority of Vietnamese consider themselves Buddhists, but Buddhism here is special. It is a mix of the classical Buddhism of Mahajana with the cult of ancestors, Taoism and Confucianism. There is a lot of altars, and the offerings are lying in front of each of them. Hanoi also has its own god, better to say its own patron spirit, but very highly esteemed, Hu Yen Tian Chan Wu. His bronze statue is established in the Quan Khan temple, people pray before it. In the 11th century, on a high wooden pile, in the middle of a small pond, the temple with the gold statue of the goddess Mercy was established. The pagoda on one column has safely remained until the middle of the last century, but in 1954 it was burned down by the French colonialists. They were grieving that they had to leave Hanoi. Later, Vietnamese restored the unique temple, but instead of a wooden foundation, concrete was used. The contribution of colonialists to the spiritual life of Vietnam is not limited to the destruction of the pagoda on one column. The French missionaries took great pain to acquaint Vietnamese with true belief. The Catholic cathedral which has remained up to now serves as the visible evidence of their efforts. The history of Vietnam is a history of fight against aggressors, with Chinese in first place. The 19th and 20th centuries added a certain variety to the history of Vietnam. They began to be at war, not with Chinese anymore, but with Europeans and among themselves. The country was divided into the communistic north and the anti-communistic south. Skirmishes between them have developed flopped into war. The USSR and the USA quickly got involved. We got on top of the tower with the opening view on the museum, tanks, planes and other equipment from the times of the Vietnamese war. The museum's yard is encumbered by samples of the American and Soviet military equipment. There is nowhere to step without stumbling upon an airplane, a helicopter or an armored troop carrier. Ho Chi Minh, under whose leadership the Northern Vietnamese Communists won the war against the Southern Vietnam, was placed in the mausoleum after his death. The trip across Northern Vietnam ended in Hanoi. Valeri and Svetlana go to the airport early in the morning to depart to Bangkok. And from the Bangkok airport, they hurry on the island Ko Chang to get to the beach in the evening of the same day. During the rainy season, it is dangerous to swim in the sea. Standing waves and strong currents are formed here. It is rare that someone ventures deep into the sea, more than knee high. We are left to spend the whole day in the pool, or to go on an excursion inside the island. Settlements are only on the narrow coastal edge of the land, and the central part of the island Ko Chang is continuous forests and rocks. There are a lot of waterfalls. The biggest of them, Klong Pliu Waterfall, is located in the depth of the national park. With the approach of the evening, tourists gather on the beach. Here, cozy restaurants open, offering the freshest seafood meals. Performances of jugglers begin. Traveling across Indochina comes to an end in the same place where it began three weeks ago, in Bangkok. The zoo was created in 1939, in the private park of the king Ramat V. Animals more or less familiar to the public are brought here. The largest of them, the giraffes, the hippopotamus, the tiger and the bear attract the most attention. It is nice to just relax in the zoo, to walk along the valleys, to admire the colorful fishes in the pond, or to take a boat ride on the lake. The Chao Phraya River is just about to flood the banks, but it is not a reason to be worried. The rainy season doesn't disturb and cannot stop travelers or fans of an active lifestyle. Another travel within the World Without Visas project comes to an end. <laughs>